Hello fellow Sojourners and welcome back to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. Today's episode is number 52, 52 weeks of content and the one year anniversary of our inaugural episode. Yeah! On today's episode, we take a look back over the last year and play all our greatest hits. Roll that tape! Gay! Gay. 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 I'm gonna say it. Gay. 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 We'll also discuss Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay Bill and the clearly unhinged and disturbing responses to it. I'm Pastor Shane and I'll be your guide down memory lane today as we appropriate some culture. I believe it was the great Mark Hamill who once wrote, gay, 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 Though my delivery doesn't quite do it justice. More succinctly but less poetical than the bard, Stephanie Rule opined, gay. Never thought of it that way before. Not to be outdone, Rosanna Arquette chimed in saying, we will say gay every day, gay, gay, gay. Which is perhaps the worst Dr. Seuss book. Glennon Doyle echoed the need for quota saying, can everybody please commit to saying gay every few minutes, every single day to offset Florida? Every few minutes? That's a big gay commitment. It's hard to work gay and naturally during staff meetings. Elaine Hendricks tweets, I stand proudly with every single member of the LGBTQAI community. AI? LGBTQ has become sentient. All of this bizarre behavior has been activated due to Florida's Bill HB1557, which according to our media and celebrities, it is bad. But how bad? On a scale of one to Watergate, how bad is it? This in some ways is worse than Watergate. Wow. Should have been sitting down for that one. Well, I read it. It's only seven pages. And frankly, I did not care for it. The plot went nowhere. The characters are ill-defined or virtually non-existent. And while I appreciated the themes, I did not find it to be a compelling read. But you know what is a compelling read? in case you're looking to get something for the one year anniversary of ATC. And speaking of the anniversary, let's take a look at some highlights of ATC submitted by you, the viewers. I don't know why I bother. Anyway, let's take a look at what's actually in this Florida bill. Most of it centers on parental rights, but the so-called don't say gay portion comes on page four, which says, quote, Classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. So beyond third grade, it's a little more open-ended and vague, not forbidden, but it needs to be age appropriate. But definitely no class instruction about sexual orientation, gay, straight, or otherwise, or gender identity for kindergartners through third grade. Again, kindergarten to third grade. The fact that that is in any way, shape, or form controversial is a clear sign of our total and abject moral decay as a society. And it's been a long time coming. Years ago, religion, particularly Christianity, was systematically removed from the classroom. No prayer, no Ten Commandments, no teaching from the Bible. And you go, well, you know, I wouldn't want my kids studying the Quran. I wouldn't want them indoctrinated into Islam or Mormonism. Neutrality seems the best. But nature abhors a vacuum. Values are going to be taught. So whether it's religious like this, the kingdom of heaven is like a pride parade. Yes, the kingdom of heaven is like a parade to the sin of pride. Let's see. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a uh, hidden treasure. 
valuable pearl, more treasure, uh, leavened bread, mustard seed, sprouting seed, a dragnet. Nope, no pride parades. And no parades in general, because really all parades are pretty terrible. Values will be taught, whether that's religious values or civic values. Here's Pete Buttigieg's partner leading young people in a pledge of allegiance to the rainbow flag. All right, I pledge my heart, I pledge my heart. to the rainbow, to the rainbow. Of the not-so-typical gay camp, of the not -so -typical gay camp. One, camp. one camp, full of pride, full of pride. Indivisible, indivisible, with affirmation and equal rights for all. And naturally, this sort of thing, along with curriculum, is playing out in schools all over America. If you can correctly identify more gender or orientation flags than flags of countries, you're doing education wrong. Also, why isn't there a straight flag? Oh wait, there is. According to the New York Times, thanks to our COVID-19 policies, it's alarming the degree to which children are severely behind in reading. It might have worsened because of the pandemic, but that's not actually new. According to USA Today, National Assessment of Education and Progress showed that only 24% of seniors scored at or above proficient in math in 2019. In reading, 37% of seniors scored at or above proficient in 2019. The exams also survey students about what they're doing inside and outside the classroom. Half of seniors in 2019 said they read literature outside of school at least once or twice a year. Around one in four seniors said they never read stories or novels outside of school. That explains a lot. What on earth is going on in our classrooms? Let's take a look. <laughs> Okay, a bit of a hands-on physics lesson, a little unorthodox, but darn it if he doesn't get results. What else? Showing up to teach fourth grade the day after the Don't Say Gay bill passes through the Florida House. Our society has changed somewhat in ways for the better, okay? No longer, for most people, is that line a hard-drawn line, okay? That line gets blurred. There are still people in our society, the older generations, who that's a hard line. That's how they grew up. That's their mentality. You don't cross that line. You are a boy, you are a girl, those are your roles, you know what you're supposed to do. But as your generation is coming around and the generations that are going to come after you, we are hoping that that line completely disappears. And there is no line. And you are free to be whoever it is that you want to be. And you dress and act and do whatever it is that you want to do because that is who you are. But society still, there's still a line. Yes, we can't read, sure we can't do math, but the important thing is installing in them gender confusion. And that's one lesson that is sinking in. According to an Arizona Christian University survey, 30%, 30% of millennials identify as LGBTQ. Values are being taught in the classroom and reinforced in the broader culture, which is a pretty potent combination in shaping mushy minds. A catechism for LGBTQ brought to us by our taxpayer dollars. Now, of course, schools differ from school to school, from school district to school district, and much of this can be addressed at a local level. As Christians, we absolutely should be involved as teachers, principals, superintendents, school board members, and parents to better educate and institute some of our values. But in broad in cultural terms, there is a clear and obvious attempt to foist onto the American public school system the ideology of the LGBTQ, an ideology which is antithetical to Christianity. These are not neutral value systems, and there isn't a single aspect of human sexuality that doesn't fall under the purview of morality, and schools are not allowed to explicitly teach Christian morals. So whose morals are they teaching? 
Whose values? Which worldview? Banning even talking about these issues is as neutral as it gets, which is why the Florida bill is good. But even that is only until third grade. And the freak out over that is because the other side knows just as well as we do that values are instilled at a young age. We get a picture of this in Deuteronomy. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. Your kids are in school for seven hours being taught, instructed, indoctrinated. What words are being fixed in their hearts and minds? Then they come home, watch some TV, listen to music, play some video games. How many hours before bed? What values? Whose worldview are they listening to? It's no wonder so many more young people are identifying as LGBTQ and pledging allegiance to the rainbow flag. They all went through the catechism. But all is not lost. A recent Daily Wire poll found that 64% of Americans support the Florida bill when they actually read it. Parents are awakening to this, getting involved or finding more and more alternatives. And this is a cultural fight that we definitely need to be in. Well, that'll do for our 52nd episode. Thanks for joining me in this little experiment. As always, if you like what we're doing, like, subscribe, write a review, leave a comment, or share. One button press goes a long way. You can follow me on the major socials, join my author's Facebook page. I'm telling you, you're going to want to do that. And I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. <laughs>